Can you hear me? Hi there. Good. Nice. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Loud and clear. All right. I'm on. Pet. Perfect. I'm on. Pet. I don't have models here. I'm just going to mute it for now. Okay. Great. Good to have you, man. Hi, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Professor, I think the mic is on, but we cannot hear you. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Great. Okay. Great. So um, as I'm recording the call, maybe we'll start soon. And for those that were not able to join in such short notice, uh, we will send a video. But I would like to thank all of you for uh, being available uh, on such short notice to be on the call, including the professor. And uh, before I give the word to professor to talk about the checker, I would really like to thank him for his commitment and effort for the last couple of months and weeks. And let alone last uh, week, he was supposed to be on holiday with his kids and family, but he was constantly working on the checker. Um, and we were in touch uh, with the professor while he was there and working on the checker. So I would let him now alone speak about the almighty checker that we had been <coughs> waiting for some time. And professor will take us uh, uh, through the process. Thank you, professor. Thank you very much, Nick, for introducing you. I will try to share my screen. So in that condition, I can show you exactly while I do demonstrate the, the checker itself. Okay, just, if you confirm that you see my screen now. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. I cannot hear anyone confirming that you can see my screen. Um, yes. Can you hear me, Professor? We can see the screen. Professor, Hello? can you hear us now? Yes, I do hear you. Now. Yeah, we uh, we were we were able to see the screen. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. But I was to hear you. So when yeah, uh, if that again, so you can pose me a question on the chat because I don't know. What, once I share the screen, yeah, I'm not sure if I can hear you talk. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, now now I can hear you. Okay, so great. Yeah, again, uh, thank you very much for joining on this very short notice, and uh, I am very glad to have this opportunity to share the work done so far on the token checker, no shit checker as we call it for today. Uh, this is a work done in a couple of past months, I would say starting on now in, in uh, January, and we composed with uh, several models. And there have been like uh, 5,000 lines of code already written in order to have these kind of results. And uh, we are very glad that it is done already. There are, besides some small details, some uh, data mapping, some information, additional information which we need to provide to you, and some user guides which we need to provide to you once it is online. The rest, in terms of functionality, is composed, is completed, and uh, we will just continue to improve it by time. To explain better, the Nosheet Checker is composed uh, approximately of uh, six different sections. The four ones are shown on the main screen. Uh, the, one of the most important is Honeypot Checker and Rothpool Checker. The second one is Graph and Charts. The third one is Tokenomics. And the fourth one is Token Contract Details. Each of these sections have one, let's say, common information, com uh, an intersection between them because they serve uh, as the input of information for another section beside the graph and charts, which are general things, uh, general, let's say, composition of, of information from different other sources. So it's something which we want to the checker beside not having the same thing come up with value directly from this, this uh, tool. With the wrapper to the main standards. So the idea is to really to <clears throat> to have a high high uh, probability of catching the honeypot and so far the results are quite good i would say uh, it's quite impressive compared to tools which exist today <laughs> the second most important thing i would say is the rock pool which uh, for us we use the pivot elements to check if the rock pool 
uh, if the contract is wrapped by checking and, and examining all the folders of the smart contract with a report to the circulation supply, which means that Professor, if there is a secret, may, yes? I, may I interrupt? If you can go just like uh, last one minute to explain it again, because my phone rang and the recording stopped just last minute. Can you repeat it again? From <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I will start. Okay, I will start over. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Okay. To start over again, I, I would say that the the, the notion checker is composed from uh, six different section, and the, one of them, which is one of the most important one, is the honeypot checker and the Rothkin checker, uh, because we know that the, the most damages can be occur on the honeypot aspects and also in, in the Rothkin. So the idea behind of catching or flagging the honeypots is that we use different techniques, we use uh, examination of the taxes, different kind of decentralized exchange. Also, we use uh, several and powerful techniques to check the function reward and to check the smart contract function with a report to the standard functions. So that is how we test somehow the honeypot, and this is how we qualify the smart contract of honeypot once the, the model qualified based on this data. I would say the second most important aspect of this tool is the rough pool, and in the rough pool we use a pivot element in order to be able to determine if a smart contract token, is a token contract is a rough pool or, or not. And that pivot element varies on the different holders and different the value of this, of the token holders plus, uh, it checks the current circula uh, circulation supply. So it varies in different contexts. So, uh, you will see with the example, but the idea is to go and to search if, if one of the holders can manipulate somehow the, the liquidity of the contract and trap the, uh, or decrease the Price of the token. So we do really, uh, let's say, math behind this rock pool, even though it is show one one message behind. But the idea is to check always on the data itself to see how the holders behave, what is the amount the person pays of the holders they hold as a token in order to be able to qualify a token as a as a honey pot. I was uh, the, the let's say the second section is a general section about graph and charts, so it shows different information for the graphs. And this is a general that we have gathered here in the same pool, so you have all the information in the same place. <laughs> the third most, I would say, important aspects of uh, token checker is the token index. What we do here, if you remember, several times we have done um, token review with the general, with the uh, with, uh, all members of uh, NoShip community. And one aspect is we it, uh, in terms of review, we consider mostly was the token limits. What we have decided in terms of, of being able to check where the token stands with the uh, economical aspects on the crypto system, we, we have developed a section called token limits. The section token limits is composed of uh, liquidity locked, and this means that if a uh, token contract is new, if they have locked some specific amount of, uh, of uh, liquidity, uh, what is the current total supply? What is the current added uh, liquidity on the on the DAX? Of course, we always consider the pay and uh, sell taxes because these are very significant parameters uh, in order to avoid rough pull, reward, marketing, wallet, and the reflection for the holders. So all this aspect we consider in a single place in order to be able to perform the calculation and to avoid false uh false uh, positives and we have done a lot of a lot of uh, research and uh, development behind so the idea is to, to be as most accurate as possible and we are 99.99 percent so far the fourth section is token contract details and um, here what we intend to show is a little bit more all possible details about the contract by giving by showing the names involved who is the owner what is the current uh, total supply? What is the current circulating supply? What is the last activity of the contract? Because some of the 
token contract can be dead for let's say 100 days or several days and then if somebody wants to invest just because he knows the name or he knows some activity of the contract he can check the last activity he can check it through the checker by just uh, adding the token contract on the text box here and all the information will be shown we will see if the contract is verified or not if there is no, no verification behind the contract sometimes this result remains blank and uh, it shows that no PIC or no kind of verification sent to the Binance or Ethereum. Okay, <laughs> for, for those who are, let's say, interested in coding, uh, we, can find, we can find this smart contract source code instead of going to the several sources in order to collect the, all the function. You can have uh, all, the, all of them in a, in a single page so you can explore by yourself how the contract is structured in a way that you can read the contract. And of course, we have total holders for that specific contract. Um, <laughs> beside that, beside this main section, which you can see on the, on the first on the landing page, still this will be extended, mm -hmm. but not be the current version because there are some more models which are under development. So we will add another section on analytics and we will add more features, but that, that's something which will come on time. But for this version, it will come up uh, like this. Uh, another section which is, is called statistics and in the statistics if you can notice we have we count how many tokens we have already captured as a honeypot or not honeypot this we catch all the tokens which has been searched but then we qualify them if they are honeypot or no this depends depends on their behavior and uh, then uh, we determine it by the given date and in this network can be in BSC, can be in Ethereum, can, uh, because these are the two main networks which we perform the algorithmic searching. But if you prefer, if you prefer to see the history, what's happened? Let's suppose in five years or in three years, this, this tools have like 1,000 records or 100,000 records, and you don't want to each time to go to say past the token contract and see all the details. It's enough for you just to put like a name, like a name of, of that contract token and then perform a search and you will find 100% and you will find all the information what's happened on the specific date that that token, if it was a rough pool or if it was a funny part. And uh, basically this has a significant information and historical information because we collect this data, we work a lot with the data and the idea behind, idea behind, for example, is that some of the token contracts, as we know, they can turn to honeypot easily and they, they can, uh, let's say, for one month or for one day, they can be a honeypot and uh, for the rest of the, let's say, activity cannot be honeypot. Mm -hmm. They have created a trap here. Eh? The trap, trap, not in the sense that to, to, to let's say, to qualify them as honey, a honeypot, but in a sense that you have information and uh, we collect their history in order to see when they have turned to the honeypot. And this is quite a state of the art tool on the market because here, if you are honeypot, you will be registered as a honeypot on that day. And there is a significant amount of data which show why you have the honeypot. And uh, if, if there's, your history is clear, then there is nothing to be worried about. Uh, besides being able to search by token name, you can search by token address. For example, the only thing you need to do is just to pass the address and the search, and you will be served with all this information. Uh, yeah, we can extend as much records as we have, and in future we are thinking to add additional components here, but that, that will come with time. <laughs> Last but not least, we have the token monitoring. And uh, for this, I need information, I need data, which I will demonstrate. But before I go there, if you can see, uh, it's all function history. Uh, as you may know, in a smart contract, we have all the owner function, which uh, allows some, let's say, self-governance of the, of the token contract by the owner of, of, the, of the contract. And the idea, the idea behind is that if, if uh, there are some function which allow uh, owner to, let's say, to make, take some uh, advantages for himself in terms of benefiting from himself. 
Uh, he can add liquidity. He can he can add someone in the blacklist, whitelist. He can remove someone from from the uh, fee. He can include, for example, he can include on the fee. He can exclude from the fee. And uh, what we do, we do a data data analysis. We perform a machine learning stuff in order to be able to store this information in the uh, in the tool. And uh, uh, we check the series function. What does this mean? This means that any time from the existence of the smart contract, if that function, for example, excludes from fee, has been called, has been used from the token owner, we will list it here. And we list it here, for example, show more, show less. If that function has been used 1,000 times, we will list it 1,000 times. And this is not the end. Uh, we will give you the description of this function and the meaning of this function. What does this function mean? What are the consequences if somebody uses it, if the owner uses this function? And all this information you will find extended in the specific links. This is the work which we are doing to ramp it to map the, the, the token checker with additional data points. So then you are not lost. You will have a plenty of information to read to understand and uh, all of them are simplified. You can see we have tried to simplify and very good well try to prove the design by time. So even you can verify by yourself the transaction by going exactly direct to the transaction. So so you know you know exactly that you are you are on the transaction and you know exactly that that transaction happened on, on a specific data. This is just a random transaction, so you can basically see why and who who was excluded from from uh, that from that uh, token owner from the fee. Okay, so basically this is, this is these are the current functionalities, and uh, it's not just for the excluded for the fee, but if you have a smart contract code for any any uh, only owner function, you will find the history here. Of course, if the, the if the function is not let's say used then there is no history, there is no transaction for that. But as you can see, any time we made this use, yeah, we have a link of transaction here. For example, we have a blacklist here, which is used once, and we can easily verify who has been blacklisted, and uh, all these aspects we can monitor at that time. Okay, so it's, it's, it's the time for the demonstration. For example, the only thing you need to do is to pass the token contract address here. And you push the button, no shit chart. And you wait. You wait because we, we do call and we do use like uh, 30, 30 APIs, 30 data points in order to be able to gather all this information plus the calculation which we do for each section, which in total is, is uh, the average time of receiving the information is 25 to 30 seconds today without any further optimization, which is much faster than any tool in the market compared to the information which we provide. <laughs> anyway, as I mentioned, so if the contract is honeypot, the token, uh, the token is honeypot. Of course, we will add and adapt additional and better, like, let's say more fancy messages here. We will exactly give uh, the right, uh, let's say, conclusion why and how it is on a pot. And beside that, as I mentioned, we have this additional information if I want to see why this contract is on a pot and in general to understand how the honeypot works in a sense that how to protect yourself from the honeypot. All this information you will provide it in this link. And uh, similarly, it is it is a rock pool because it contains an address, a token address, which has 37.7% uh, percent of the, which can drain the, uh, the liquidity, which means that we use and we check what is the current added liquidity, which is very low compared to the total supply. And we check if, if that percentage of amount, for example, is 37, the first one, but it, as you can see, there is another one with 13, there is another one with 17. For example, this can drain part of liquidity as this one as well. And we don't say that it's qualified, but it contains an address and which is really, really 
high potential to be a rock pool. Oh, besides this, this is a honey pot and you don't need to go further to analyze. Of course, there is no nothing to see on, on the tax itself. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, the token contract details, we have the uh, main network, DSC main network, the name, uh, for example, if there is no verification of the contract, there is there is no return as a message here. So we see as well the last activity, which has been on uh, on the March 2022. We see circulation supply, so they have put everything there. So it's it's obvious that this contract is public is okay. <laughs> then the uh, uh, gold digger was the name. Here we can find gold digger on the on the address. So basically, this is something which I have used. But but you can uh, basically the last on a podcast will be listed the first one here. So it's uh, uh, a scanning. Okay, this is this is the, the the situation. Okay, we can have another example. For example, when they want to manipulate the tax and only flag the honeypot itself and the raffle itself. So, if if I want to go to to the another smart contract, this is like quite suspicious. It might uh, not necessarily be the honeypot, but it has perhaps a huge potential in the selling. And the buying tax, which is a, a quite, quite a trap, trap for you, for us as a user, for example, especially on the selling tax. <coughs> From the perspective of coding, of the perspective of DAX and the perspective of the smart contract, it's not a honeypot. But we qualify it according to the ta tax. Why we qualify, for example, because we need to, we need to adapt this message so to say that, okay, this seems to be a honeypot, this can change any time, but you consider it as a honeypot as long as the tax of the selling tax is extremely high, which means you are trapped in it. Which means that once you have bought, bought it, you are not able to sell it. Or whenever you sell it, you lose a uh, majority of, of, uh, of your tokens. So, so this is kind of honeypot and rough pool itself in the same sense. <laughs> so we consider always what is the ad liquidity around on the tax. So these are the information which we provide. As you can see here, and for example, we have the let's say the list of top ten or top twenty holders. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to bring for the users, for the users of Noxit Checker on the real time, uh, the most heavy holders of the token contract. I remember, as I mentioned, all these parameters we use in, in the specific fields of, of the checker. But if you want to explore a little bit more the, the folders, you have all the folders listed on the Binance margin on the official, official uh, website of the, of the network which we are searching for. As well, as I mentioned, beside the last activity, we, have, we can move to the code. What exactly this mean, as I mentioned before, so we can investigate the code and uh, we see that this is a standard smart contract and everything is fine with the smart contract uh, because we, we compare the smart contract against the current standards of, uh, of Ethereum smart ARC20 contract. And uh, yeah, for, for those who are, let's say, keen to, who want to explore a little bit more on, on the code itself, they don't need to go to the Binance Smart Chain, they can just retrieve the code in a, in a single uh, file from, from the checker. As well, we should we see, as you can see, for different smart contracts, they have a different movement, they have different history on, in terms of monitoring. Uh, and the monitoring means that the check, whenever this owner only uh, function has been called, because, as I mentioned, these have the most significant uh, value in terms of giving some uh, governance uh, to the token owners uh, in terms of being able to benefit or being able to exclude someone from the token contract and to change some specific fees. As another case, so we have as well the cases when the, uh, the smart contract 
uh, interface or as called ABI is not accessible. And we have the case when the transaction is reverted, and this is automatically. This is the case, for example. Um, this is the case where uh, you you don't know exactly what the smart contract itself is doing. Huh? It sounds like you, you you cannot you are not able to see the function. You are not able to see uh, how the smart contract is designed in, in a way that you really can. Uh, know exactly which function that would do. As you can see, the smart contract is not accessible in the sense that it is purely on a pot, purely a uh, rough pool. And the idea behind this is you cannot access the interface and all the, let's say, liquidity on different DEXs is almost, uh, not is almost, is zero. So you cannot make exchange, you cannot, you can buy, but then you cannot sell it. It's there forever. So basically, this this is the way how you can how you can test any smart contract, and, and beside being able to, to retrieve this information through the the checker, they, they give you enough links in order to verify this information and to go deeper to understand this information as well. All right, so this is it. If you have any question, if you want to particular detail any any information mm -hmm. let me know please thank you professor yeah what one detail but mm -hmm. we, we are uh, almost done we are just installing it on the real server mm -hmm. uh, we are making the last test we are doing the security measures we are trying to get that point that I mentioned so it for you as a community you will be able to test it very soon so it's just a matter of some details which we are not willing to rush before we map everything so it's it's there it's, it's there and it's for you to test it very soon I think that was my one question we do have someone like in IT security or something that's just double checking the site to make sure it's secure I think you kind of answered that just now Yes, we have, we have, uh, this is what we're doing now, indeed. Uh, we, are, we are taking all the measures of the security in order to, to avoid any, let's say, misinforming or misunderstanding of this information if somebody can or try to manipulate this information. So we are taking all the measures in order to, uh, in a standardized way, uh, by considering uh, the security measures to deploy this application. So we have security services in dealing with the security aspects. And uh, as you know, the security aspects always takes time because you have to consider one layer, then you go to another layer. But as a tool, it is there. It's just a matter of mapping. Uh, it's a matter of uh, putting on the server, testing from different uh, point of view. As well, we are. I am running the stress test, which means that we we are expecting to have like uh, plenty of. Uh, Denial of services and to see how we can, let's say, make it redundant in two, two different servers in order to avoid the, the denial of services. This is just a precaution which I, yeah, which we are thinking to take. Awesome. That sounds great. Any other question or statement around the checker? Professor, thank you for taking us through the, all the details. And let's see if somebody else has any question or comment. Uh, for, for me, one detail, I think Postman, Postman, he contacted me early this evening. Postman, are you there? Mm. Yeah, I'm here, I'm driving now. Oh uh, yeah, okay, because I think it was like, uh, I didn't understand your message indeed, uh, that's why I could not reply, but then I, I took uh, some information from the community that it was you, like a uh, member of Nushi community who contacted me. So, do you have any questions? Do you want any particular section to be understood? Or? No, it sounds like it's going to be pretty simple to operate once you get it on online. Okay, that's, that's, you know, the simple thing takes take the most time. And then if you try to simplify it, mm -hmm. it sounds like you, the only thing you need to do is to push this no shit check button, and the rest, we will do the rest. Thanks for all your hard work. Yeah, I'd like to thank Professor because it's really, for me, I mean, it's my first time hearing like all through the details, but I heard as well last week when we had a call with Wendy, who is also a programmer and is working on the back end of the game. 
And seeing him being so excited while professor was taking us to the checker, for me, it was like, okay, like, you know, he comes from similar field and like him being that excited, I can only imagine what it can do. And uh, for me, I can explain it in, in simple words that this really goes well with our mission, that, which is AI based, AI based education platform that tries to make the world less shitter and more com uh, uh, comprehensible to like people who are coming in this field. And I think no checker really states that and, and helps people to avoid possible scams and, and do and take the right investment. And I'm really happy and proud to be part of ownership for what professor has done so far. And I can only imagine how it's going to be seen by others once this is launched and, and, and properly used. Yeah. Well, another aspect which uh, I, I want to mention here is this, this is a community tool. So everyone can contribute on even now and then in the future. Uh, the idea with the contribution is that, uh, of course, then the market might change, but we will adapt because we have created a model and the architecture of the uh, notion checker uh, works in the sense that it, it is quite adaptable with the new changes. So there is no static. It's all the dynamic and we can consider any changes. So you as a community can arise, let's say, a point to consider and be adapted on the checker. As you can see, it in, in, include this measure points which today we need uh, to consider on, on the on the scamming market on the scamming market but then if something changes we can adapt it quite easy because we have designed the architecture this tool to be like a li really easy to integrate new models new libraries new let's say designs and of course the user interface can be fully adaptable thank you again professor um would anyone like to, to speak or say something maybe before we call it tonight? Hey, this is Seth. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say this looks great. I mean, I'm, I think uh, the space really needs something like this. And, you know, it, it should, should go a long way towards, uh, towards helping, helping new, new users and even um, kind of veteran users in the space protect themselves. Um, you know, one, one thing I was wondering, um, will there be a way for say for, for one user to to say something that they're really interested in, um, kind of like in a, in a watch list type thing where maybe, you know, it, it, we do a search and in the moment it's not uh, considered a rope or honeypot, but maybe we want to you know, check back uh, later and see if anything's changed and kind of have a, have a few configurable tokens that we want to keep an eye on. Is, is that something that's, that we're going to be able to do? Well, uh, that, that's definitely something which you see this icon monitoring token. Uh, this is something which is meant somehow to be on, on that sense. Besides now, it has a limit, limit. I wouldn't say limited, but it has a purposeful, purposeful uh, functionality. You will add here an additional component so you as a user will choose which token you want to monitor. And you will receive kind of notification once uh, changes on the smart contract or the liquidity habits, which means that uh, the, the contract which hasn't been uh, honeypot can be turned up to honeypot as I mentioned before. And then that feature is, uh, it has been passed uh, the evaluation phase, but it hasn't st started to be developed and it will be uh, around mid, mid July to be developed. Because uh, to clearly explain, first we will stabilize this version, and then we will integrate different models. This is the only, this is why I mentioned this is a community tools and this idea. Whenever we have some kind of uh, good ideas and we try to find uh, the human resources to help us on this, uh, we will definitely do that because we, we we want this tool to be used from the community and to have a general purpose. Which means that we consider all the ideas you have, uh, but we don't like say we don't personalize the idea for a specific user. We try to maintain a community level of the usability of this tool. So thank for reminding us uh, as well. <laughs> this is very good ideas. Okay, great. Sounds good. Yeah, like I was saying, I'm very excited to be able to uh, test it out myself and start using it. So yeah, thank you. Hey guys, I got a quick question for you. Um, 
this checker is awesome looking. I'm guessing this is the entry level that everybody can look at. And is there going to be levels where people have to pay or sign up for something? Uh, yes, this basic functionality there is now a need to pay uh, because we this is a community tool as I mentioned, and as uh, my uh, colleagues from Russia has already said several times before, but as well we are thinking some additional features which uh, someone from uh, the different community or from Russia community wants to have this feature in their own let's say personalized account uh, because we can uh, make like a separate separated section for, for being uh, personalized and uh, there are some functionalities which we are thinking that we can put on a, uh, on a subscription with a small amount just to help us to maintain the, the core of, of this application because then once we expand it with the new feature, features we need them to add additional resources, computing resources, human resources to maintain it, and then we perhaps we might need it in order to maintain the tool. But we don't, as you know, this is a community tool and we want really to, to be used from the community instead. All right, thank you very much. Looks great. Thank you. Um, any Anybody else, any other comments before we, we will call it tonight? Uh, remember again, the call is being uh, recorded, um, audio and video. It will have some watermarks, but I think it's everything is seeable, just like the last one. So, and if no one has any comments, or I think uh, most of you, I hope you're excited about what's coming. And I would like to thank again the professor um, about his time and his work um, that he has done to collect all this data. Uh, in